Hi, poker players. This is Al Spath, your host today on Positive Poker Insiders. And I got a special guest to bring to you today, Brad Wilson from over at EnhanceYourEdge.com. And Brad is on with us right now on Skype. Are you there? I am here. How are you, sir? Oh, very good, very good. Sorry to take away from your Valentine's Day, but uh, we'll make this enjoyable, I hope, for our listeners and those who will be watching this up on YouTube. And then you can get to taking your five and seven-year-old daughters uh, out to see the Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. That sounds like a great day. That's a great day. Brad's coming to us from near Atlanta, Georgia. And he's an online uh, streamer and coach, Enhance uh, Your Edge. Uh, tell, tell us how you came about that name of Enhance Your Edge. Um, there's no, uh, <laughs> it wasn't, no special story behind it. Just doing a lot of searches on GoDaddy.com to see what was taken and what wasn't. And that one seemed kind of appropriate. I, I, I just kind of, I wanted to make my own thing, my own website and needed a name obviously and i don't know just came came from the depths of my my mind well i guess while you're streaming or coaching i guess you talk about edges and how they all add up and and those that have the most edges in, in a game are going to be more successful than those that don't right sure so uh, i i think it's appropriate i i've watched your stream i've hosted your channel um several times whenever uh, i'm not on if if I see you or Dusty Schmidt or anybody that goes on, I'm happy to share that with my listeners because you guys put out, you know, tons of information and you vary. You're you're so much different than somebody else. You had didn't you have Josh Templeton sitting at, on your one of your streams here recently? Yeah, we have a couple guys that that stream for for the website, and um, they they all play generally mid stakes. But they're all good guys. They're all, you know, I, I feel like they've they've bought into helping people improve and doing doing their best to to give back to the poker community. And so they're excited to excited to help everybody out. When uh, Josh was on the other day, I, I he he won a huge pot and the, and the dollar bills came running down on the the site. I think it was Bravado or whatever you play on. And anyhow. He said, "Make it rain." And I said, "Well, let, I said, make it pour." And he, he liked the downpour. He, he said, "I, I got to get one of those things that makes it downpour." He says, "I want more money in my pots." <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you're in the uh, the Skype group, there's always the the little rain coming down emoji. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I like what he said uh, uh, on your face on your uh, page on your uh, website. There, he said that you always want to surround yourself with successful people and. Uh, in fact, uh, Mike Katz, I believe, is the name. Also, he said that you know you're one of the best poker minds around. So you guys must be pretty close knit uh, group. Yeah, Mike's a Mike's a bit of a flatterer, but no, he's he's a good guy. He's a uh, Mike's an LA LA cash game pro, and uh, also has a lot of tournament success too. I think he's he's probably won over a million dollars in tournaments, but primarily cash game pro. Really good guy. You've been going at this. It says on most of the websites and profiles I looked at, 11, 12 years. I don't know if that's been updated or not. Is it more? Is it more than that now? I w when I got the poker bug, I was 19 years old, and I saved saved a bunch of money, or what felt like a bunch of money at the time. You know, a couple thousand bucks, mm -hmm. and uh, just decided to take a shot. I I didn't have I didn't have any responsibilities in life, I guess. So I had the opportunity to just to just move from where I lived in Chattanooga to Florida and try to learn the game and try to make it work on a couple thousand bucks. And somehow I, I did it. But if anybody is thinking about attempting that today, I would say not not very high chance of success. But keep your, uh, keep your day job right now. Well, I mean, if you're 19. Then go for it. Like if you have a, a solid support system where if you fall flat on your face, you can just come back home and you know resume your job at Applebee's, like <laughs> you know, like you never left. Then it's not a big deal. I see. I see. Well, that's good advice. That's good advice because there's a lot of <clears throat> there shouldn't be a lot of 19 year olds out there online playing since there there's some age requirements. But I'm sure there are a few 
17 through 19, 20 year olds that oh. are cutting their teeth on the on the, on the online saying they're 21. Back then it wasn't online though. I right. I started playing live. I uh, I was 20 years old when I did move to Florida and I started playing on those um, you know the cruises to nowhere off of Cape Canaveral where they right. would take you into international waters. I see. So the the very first game that I played was uh, five ten limit, and I remember the first the first big pot that I won at five ten limit. I I was on the boat, had never played poker before in a live setting. I had read you know I had read Super System. I had read the theory of poker. I had done my due diligence, but this was the first time I had put it in action, and. Um, you know, <laughs> you don't know this, but uh, I didn't even know this at the time, but I get motion sickness really bad. Ooh. Like, I can't sit uh, in the passenger side seat of a car. I have to drive everywhere or I'll get sick. Oh. So the, my very first big poker hand that I won, I got aces. I just remember raising and re-raising as much as I possibly could. I won the pot, got sick. Ran out to the side of the boat and just lost it everywhere. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> and that was that was my first experience in poker. That's your most memorable moment, then I guess, huh? It stands out to me. I'm not <laughs> going to forget that one. <laughs> um, well, we talked about Josh and we talked about uh, your site and everything. When you go on your site, I noticed that you ask people that they can sign up uh, with an email and they get a newsletter from you, but they also get access to a little bit more than that, don't they? Yeah, they get they get access to the video vault, which is twenty extra training videos. Um, more importantly, the guys on the on the email list get first access to to all of the products that I create, and they'll you know they I'm drawing in a couple of days for a free seat to Think Tank, which is worth one hundred and fifty bucks. And I I think there's a lot of benefits. No, I don't. Everything that I send out genuinely takes me hours to create and write and I I create it with my audience in mind specifically to help them improve their game there's no no fluff if you know what I mean no I, I understand it completely and talking about the think tank I was reading that you have 12 think tank members which includes two I coaches and I need to know what an I coach what is that what is an I coach uh, that would be somebody like Josh. He's uh, Enhance Your Edge. It's just an acronym. Um, he's plays mid stakes pro. He he hangs out in the group, offers feedback, gives advice, asks uh, you know penetrating questions that are that are going to force force the guys in the group to to really think in depth about poker and learn and grow because. You know, it's like anything. You can't, you can't learn and grow if you're not pushed beyond what you, where you currently are. How often does Josh say, "I never thought of it that way," and you're right, and I need to incorporate that in my game? You mean, you mean the guys in the group? Do they come up with some ideas that that say that Josh had not thought about? Um. Yeah. I mean, they ask. They ask. Good questions. I mean, they're they ask questions where I say, "Hmm, maybe I should think about it that mm -hmm. way." That's you know, thing. we're we're constantly learning and growing from each other. And I mean, poker is a very complex and tough game. And I'm not, I don't see myself uh, as being incapable of learning from from anybody. So I take information wherever I can get it from to to try to improve my game on a regular basis. Okay. Well, let's let's take it just one step further. Let's say one of our listeners is watching this up on YouTube on on uh, Alspath, uh, where I've got a lot of videos, and they see and they hear you, and they say he said something about a think tank, and it's uh, one hundred and forty nine dollars. What what do I get for that? How long does that last? And what what is, what's involved in that? How about explain that a little bit for them that are listening and watching? Yeah, the the think tank is it's our Skype group. Filled with guys that are, you know, probably if you if you are considering joining, they're probably a lot like you. They have a burning desire to learn and grow, and make money playing this game. And um, 
if you're in the group, you get access to myself, you get access to your contemporaries um, for a month, and I've gotten my guys to, you know, I guess when you add anybody to a social setting, it uh, takes them a couple weeks to, to open up, sure. but now i got my guys who are, now i got my guys who are, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought. They're, they're sweating each other, they're helping each other. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Um, I, do. I, I, I understand what you're saying exactly. And it, it's a, it's, it's a, a collaborative type uh, environment and everybody's open to say what they want and everybody's going to kick things around until they kick it to death in, in some cases. Uh, well, no, okay, sorry. Um, they... They get access, like, I'll, I'll do sweat sessions with them on okay. a regular basis. Like, that's why I don't stream all the time. Because I will fire a session up, share my screen with them. They get to watch. They get to see how I'm playing, ask me questions. We, we get to know each other. We become friends. Um, there have been a couple of guys who have, who have dropped out of Think Tank. Mo most of the guys that have joined the group stay in the group. Um, I'm capping it now. Originally it was 12, but I am capping it at 10 people now, and we, re we retain pretty much everybody that joins the group. And the, the few guys that have dropped out, I tell them, hey man, I like you, I understand that, you know, for whatever reason, you didn't want to continue, but feel free to ask me questions whenever you want. Um, it, it's just all about building a relationship, really. I hear you. And for those out there listening, I was very fortunate to stumble on, on Brad uh, a number of weeks back, and I, I wasn't watching his streams. Um, he's excellent, um, and he has a good rapport with those that are in the uh, chat room and asking the questions and things like that. Uh, I watched you stream the other day. I believe it was 2, 4, and 3, 6. How many, how many tables do you stream at one time normally, or do you play normally at one time? I play four and I stream two. So you're playing four at the time that you're doing the two. People cannot see the other two. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And I I did a lot of asking of, of the audience how many they could they could handle watching at the same time, and most people just said two. So I like I like putting two up there and giving my thoughts on those two. Although occasionally I'll, I'll get confused and <laughs> give them thoughts on an, on an invisible table. Right. Oh, well, that's good. Um, I, I watched, like I said, the 3-6 the and a 2-4 and, and some of the comments that you were making about some of the fish that were at the table and, and how you took a, your approach and your lines towards them. I, I just really enjoyed it. By the way, uh, uh, the Lango just came online over here at Positive Poker Insiders, and he said hi. He said he checked out the site and watched uh, your videos. Good stuff. He liked it. He's the lead instructor at uh, Poker School Online. His name is Dave Romer. He's out of Chicago. Uh, his his uh, Twitch handle is The Lango, uh, L A N G O. Nice. So he really enjoyed it. I turned him on to it the other day through one of my hosting of your streams. And I got dizzy last night. I was watching Dusty, and he was doing six, and I got dizzy. I'm so glad that you only put the two up um since i work with a lot of the beginner players and a lot of the the micro stakes players i i usually just concentrate on the one because that's all they can really handle and absorb and i'm asking tons of questions i'm, I'm getting them used to so many different uh concepts that they've uh, never even heard of before and that brings me to my next question to you i'm going to give you five concepts in poker and i would like you if you wouldn't mind in your opinion, to rank them in, in the order of um, you think is most important and uh, maybe even the first to learn. And that's position, odds, the cards that you're playing, the reads, or the bet sizing. So that's position, odds, cards, reads, and bet sizing. Which one of those would be number one for you? I mean, for a beginner player, the, the hand rankings is somewhat important. You got to know what hands beat other hands. So I would say the cards. Cards are um, important. 
And we're talking about somebody with just a blank slate, right? Clear mind. They got the the men in black little boop. Yeah. They don't. They don't know anything about anything. Well, they they know enough to 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 play the game, but they they don't know um, much more than that. They you know I mean they just they're really just starting out. They're playing uh, low level levels, and you know their goal is to be like you one day and get up there. And so where should they concentrate their efforts on in the beginning, and then as they progress, where should they uh, emphasize their uh, training? Yeah, I mean. So the cards is is the the first thing you're going to do. What were the other four? A uh, position, odds, reading reads on people and the bet sizes. I mean the bet sizes is very important. You need to know how to size your big hands. I I I guess bet sizing is probably number 2. Um position is going to be Number three, you you need to understand how position works, why it's so important, and then number four. Number uh, four is I would say reads on other players, and it I wouldn't say reads like an individual guy, but just um, reads of the population as a whole, the psychology of poker. Why do people take a certain action, and why why do they not? Um, when you when you get down to the base of it. Poker is a game of people. It's a game of figuring out how people think and seeing seeing what they're trying to accomplish. And if when you figure out what somebody's trying to accomplish, a lot of times you can uh, you can throw a wrench in it. And then now they gotta they gotta figure out what they need to do based on what we just did. So that's kind of how the the leveling game works. So so yeah, I would say that's that's probably number four. Number five is the odds because. I know a lot of high-level players that don't even know the odds <laughs> up down. Uh, it's a pretty low-priority thing. I mean, once you once you get the basics down of like flush draws, thirty-five percent equity. You know, it's like okay, but yeah. When I work with a lot of the new players, and you know, I, I try to convince them, although they they think they need to be in every hand because you know <laughs> they just don't realize how how behind they are and, and I try to bring them in around 10 to 14 percent and if they're doing that that's about one hand if they're playing at a, at a full table for a 10 player table you know that's about one one hand every, every trip around the table and and as they gain a little bit more experience of course that percentage moves up and they finally slide into like the 18 to, to uh, 15 to 18 range and then later on they they, they probably settle in those that are, are more comfortable not playing a six player a six player is going to be a, a lot a little bit more than that, but they, they, they generally before they make the move up into the the higher stakes, they they get into the eighteen to twenty two range. That's what I find to be about their comfort zone. And sure. Anything more than that, they have to really have skill. They have to have additional math skills, or they have to have some type of skills they bring to the table to to get them to play. There's a lot of people that like to to incorporate bluffs and semi bluffs early on in their career when they don't know the other players don't understand what a bluff or a semi bluff is so they, they don't see it it's just not going to work at the lower levels because the players they're they're opposing are, are not savvy enough for it so some of these players as they advance so they get more tools in their toolbox is what sure you got you got to you got to know how to uh, ride with training wheels before you take them off <laughs> in fact i just bought a a bike for my uh granddaughter for Christmas and it was the one that was sold on Shark Tank. It has no training wheels at all anymore. It has no pedals. The little bikes for the, the small kids now they come they're just a bike and they have to hold their feet up and they have to balance. And that's yeah. how they learn how to ride the bike is then they can go to a, a bike, a rare go bike. Yeah, see technology's a, it's a good thing. <laughs> they, <laughs> people are always learning how to innovate and, and do things more efficient than they were in this generation versus the previous one. <laughs> Like I mean, even even with poker, there's a lot more efficient ways to learn than what I did it, in 2004. There's a lot more information available. I, I just had books, and I had I had books, and you know I would go play cards, and I had the 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 older gentleman who had been playing poker for 30 or 40 years, and could could beat the game to talk to and ask and. You know, ask him questions while I'm playing. That's pretty much, that was my way of learning back then. 
you remember any of those books? Yeah, Super, Super System, Theory of Poker. Um, those were the two. Super System was the one that appealed to me. I mean, um, aggression was... I was, I, was, I was just enamored with the idea of making people fold the best hand. I don't know if it's just something inside me naturally, but I still, uh, I still love that idea. Uh, how about since uh, Super System, any other books that stand out in your mind that really have impacted you or you would recommend to people? Poker books, um, not particularly. I haven't, I haven't read a ton of poker books actually in the last probably 10 years. I, I read Gus Hansen's Every Hand Revealed. Um, it's more of a tournament book, but right. I, I love the stories in poker. That, the, I think it's the, the banker, the professor, and the suicide king. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I, I love that. It's just, uh, Dallas, just a poker Dallas story. Banker. Yes, yeah, absolutely. How about, how about uh, Ed Miller? And uh, He's going to be on in a couple of weeks, and he's got a book out that I, I gave a pretty glowing re uh, review about in Annie Up magazine recently called The Course. Have you heard anything about the course? I have not. It uh, takes you from 1, 2, 1, 3, up to 2, 5, and then 5, 10, no limit. Excellent book. Excellent. I give it my highest rating. Of all the books that I've read, uh, reviewed in the past, uh, I'd say, eight years, that was the one that got the, the best marks from me. Uh, I just read, finished Jonathan Little's book also, uh, his, his cash book, of Strategies for Cash Player. And sure. uh, I got to write a review on that as well. So uh, how about you? Have you authored any books or anything in the wind no i got i got nothing in the wind i i uh i write my articles and make my videos and, and that's that's it for now strictly on your website only then right yeah only on my website and 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 i will say like there are many facets to poker and a lot of the things that, that i've read myself have been um mental game stuff um, ways ways to balance your life and create joy and happiness. I, I've had lots of lots of players who are good friends of mine who are awesome and make all the money and you know achieve all the things that we feel like we want to achieve, but are still unhappy in their lives. And that's that's just really interesting to me. I want to know. I wanted to know what makes people happy um, first and foremost, and I and. If you could say like what's the the number one most important thing in my life and to me and for my students and for the people that I interact with on a regular basis it, it's happiness that's my that's my overwhelming number one goal okay folks I'm gonna tell you right now that you know a good poker player has a tell and and Brad has a tell because he has a do not disturb up on his uh, uh, Skype. That's because he has family day, and his tell is that that family comes first, and that family is he's proud of. He takes time to be with that family, family, and 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 grow that family and engage that family. And I'm proud to know that you are representative in, in my community, the poker community. And I appreciate the fact that you set aside time and don't get caught up in this like a lot of other people do. And I I think that's a if you got if one is the nut the family has to be one a. Yeah, for sure. And I value other people's time too. I, I think time is the it's the one resource that we can't get back. And um when you were talking about rank ranking the five things in poker that I feel are, are most important, mm -hmm. one of the thing the, the number one thing that wasn't on the list is um surrounding yourself with the right people, with good guys, guys that'll build you up, guys that will challenge you but not in a way that tears you down. Guys that, that look out for your best interest. Um, if you got people that, that tear you down, that suggest you do things that are contrary to what you know to be right, get rid of them. It's, a, it, it's really that simple. They're, they're gonna cost you lots of time, energy, effort, money. Absolutely, that's what, that's what Josh Templeton was talking about, surrounding yourself with successful people. Um, as you know, the name of this uh, stream here is, is Positive Poker Insiders. We like to be positive. We like to be positive in our mindset. We like to be positive, of course, in our winnings at the table. We like to be positive moving forward. And it, there's no room in poker for negativity. There's no room for 
a tremendous amount of doubt and beating yourself up, in my opinion, that you, you've always have to take a loss as, as you take a win. And you have to learn, and it's a hurdle, and you have to get over it, and you have to learn from your mistakes. Would you uh, buy into that concept as well? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to hate a guy for, for losing his mind after running bad for a month or having a, a 50,000 break-even run. Uh -huh. Like, those things those things are cause for concern. <laughs> those things... Sure. You gotta you gotta talk your friends off off the uh, the ledge sometimes, yeah. but you know you just you just have to be patient and kind and and just be very positive in reassuring them that everything's gonna be okay. And one of the things in think tank that I don't allow is negativity. I don't allow bad beat stories. I don't allow uh, bad beat stories in disguise. You know. Sure. Um. We we want to grow. We want to we we'll, we we want to be. Um, we want to be respectful of each other's time and energy. And I I don't want somebody telling a bad beat story that, you know, makes everybody use their energy in a negative way. That's sure. just not beneficial for the group. That's that's a very very good thing to do. Um, uh, again, back to Ed Mill, he was telling me that, and he's 10 books in now, I think he's got 10 successful books, that he almost gave up poker. When he first got to Vegas, he he did uh, two five games, a no limit two five games. He lost 19 uh, straight sessions, and he had multiple buy-ins at $500 a shot at different days. And he almost gave up poker at that time before it all turned around. So people as, as good as Ed people as good as you, people as good as anybody, anybody wants to name out there, go into a funk or go into a bad streak. How do you get out of that bad streak when you have one, if you have one, or if you have one recently? What did you do? I really focused on my personal happiness. First and foremost, I think that when you're running bad, and every, you know, you'll talk to guys who run bad, and even when I run bad, I think I'm making good decisions. I'm doing the right things. This I'm not letting it affect me. I'm continue, you know, I'm doing doing the best that I can. But what I find uh in retrospect is that I am making mistakes. And when you lose your confidence, when you feel like you can't win it all in, you don't pull the trigger on bluffs like you normally would, which affects your win rate and your your the simplest decisions can cripple you. Um, decisions that when you're running good you just click without a second thought you're you're constantly questioning everything and the, the thing that I do I take time off I don't I don't play through it I, I make sure that everything in my personal life is squared away that I, I'm feeling ready and preparing myself in the right way to play every single session and then I'll play and when I get negative if something goes wrong I quit I'm done I don't, uh, I'm not one of those guys that just plays through when he's not feeling like playing. I, I have better ways to spend my life. Very good, very good. I wrote an article again for Any Up Magazine a, a few years back. It's called Have You Stomped in a Mud Puddle Lately? So, so it was, you know, remember how much fun we used to have doing that. So I reminded people that are playing poker and they're going through a rough patch or something. Sometimes maybe just go play a fun game go go do something in life that that's going to bring some joy into you you know be that kid again and get that feeling of, of entertainment and fun and, and get a different perspective and then come back and hit it rather than sit there and think so negative and and, and start examining everything you're doing because a lot of times it's not what you're doing it's what others have done or what you're missing or or something else and Sometimes you make the right choices and people get lucky. That the guess what poker is. There's there's a matter of luck in it as well. Well, I mean that's that's why I get to play for a living. So I'm very grateful for that element of luck. <laughs> okay. All right. Ten years from now, where do you see yourself? I don't know. <laughs> I I have no idea. That I can't even predict next week. <laughs> much less much less in ten years. Hopefully I'll be alive and I'll be grateful for the life that I have then and and the time from now now to then i i just i, I want to be a i want to do my best and i want to spend time with my family and friends and i want to help as many people as i can possibly help and hopefully hopefully i'm doing that i think so i think those are great aspirations uh noodle the river 
and and this goes to one of my questions too. So I'm going to read his. He wanted like to advice for new players. Focus on PLO or hold them. Which game do you think is more profitable, and at which stake? Um, PLO or hold them. Hmm. I would say both. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't focus on only hold them. I think that the learning curve for beating Hold'em, it, it's tough to beat now. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of training videos. There's a lot of websites. So if I were focusing out, or if I were focusing as a new player, then um, I would probably put a lot of energy into PLO and gravitate towards the games that there's just less information, less knowledge about. And for sure, I, I think it's probably essential that you reach out to a PLO coach and and get help and pay pay the premium pay the money to get access to his brain because that's going to be very very beneficial moving moving forwards don't you think that uh, probably it's easier to win a if you if you excel in something other than hold them uh, a bracelet in uh, the WSOP because so many people have concentrated on hold them and their PLO ski skills and all the other uh, limit skills, things like that. You used to mention you played five ten limit before. There are not a lot of people in there with those skills anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think I think if you focus on deuce to seven, if your goal is to win a World Series of Poker bracelet, learn one of those weird games uh, or more obscure games and um, battle a field of sixty guys, and your chances of winning a bracelet is, is going to skyrocket. <laughs> but as as for mixed games, um, I have a friend out in L.A who recently picked up Deuce to Seven, and uh, he plays Limit Hold'em and No Limit as well. And what, what he's found and what he was telling me is he can now, now he can set up a mixed game with, uh, with a, a recreational amateur who happens to have a lot of money, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he'll, he'll set the mix of Limit, Deuce to Seven, Triple Draw, and No Limit Hold'em. And he'll just sit there, and they'll play heads up high stakes. And and guess what, the dudes that only know how to play no limit hold them, they can't sit there, they're scared, and so so he locks out everybody else. So the more games you learn, the more opportunity there is in the future. Pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, if you weren't uh, playing poker, what would you be doing? That's a good question. And if I ever figured out the answer to that, maybe I won't play poker anymore. <laughs> but uh, probably doing something along the same lines that I do now. I, I, I want to be autonomous. I want to own my own business. I want to help people out. So something in that, Nate, in that area. And if, uh, if you can remember, I know you said 19, you took a few dollars to Florida and everything, but did you have a job before that, your first job that you had to pay taxes on? Was there a job that you had to pay taxes? Yeah, I was a, I was a waiter. I was a server at Applebee's. I was the Apple star, the employee of the month. <laughs> <laughs> From, uh, but I gave it all up to chase my dream. That's right, and you're catching that dream. That's really cool. That's cool. Uh, you're very competitive. You can tell that because you're a poker player, and and you're you're streaming and you're sharing your information. So, what other sport uh, gets your juices flowing? Is there another sport out there that that you know, is it football, baseball? Is there something that you really have a an interest in? Yeah, I mean, I I play uh, I play flag football. I I play softball. When it gets warmer outside, um, I lo like you said. I, I, I like all competitions. I like, I like seeing a game and realizing there are many possibilities and knowing that I don't know what they are and then figuring out what they are and uh, basically beating people's brains in. <laughs> that's my <laughs> – I, I love – like I will – and that's the thing with poker too is I'm very conditioned to loss. <laughs> like uh -huh. I, can, I can lose over and over and over again, but whatever I play, I'm going to learn each time. I'm going to grow and uh, do my best. That's pretty cool. How about your best day online? Best day online, like are tournaments included here? It could, either way, cash or tournament or both. You know, just did you have one or two that just stand out in your mind where you really, really took home more bacon than you thought? Um, I mean, I, I've won twenty five thousand plus at tournaments okay. online before. Okay. I can't really recall my best day online. I've had 
you know, playing uh, 1020 and 2040 No Limit in LA, I had a day that I won, I, I think, 27,000 um, in a 1020 game in LA, and I had another day where I won, won over 20,000 too. And where did you play in LA? Is that the Commerce? Yeah, I lived at the Commerce. <laughs> they, they, they knew me on a first name basis, and uh, when, whenever Black Friday went down, and I lost the ability to play online. Right. I lost a lot of money. I uh, and, and frankly, I lost confidence in the online as a whole. I just didn't want to do it. I didn't want to go through what I went through ever again. So I decided to to go to LA and play live. And I was playing about sixty hours a week, living living in the the hotel there in the casino. Matt Savage was on last week, and he was telling us they just finished the new renovation there, and it's beautiful. Oh, yeah? At the Commerce, yeah. He said, everybody has to come back now and just check this out. It's just... <laughs> well, uh, I guess comparatively, <laughs> it would have to be, you know. I, but the rooms at the Commerce, I think, are maybe questionable. Uh -huh. But uh, as far as everything else, I love everything about, about the place. It's just my favorite place to play poker. You can... You know, I know I knew all the floor guys. Um, they would automatically put me on the list and call my room if uh, a game got good. <laughs> uh, I I I uh, I love that place. And what kind of tip did you have to give them for that when they really called you down to the game, the juicy game of the day, and, and what have you? Did, did you have to take care of them? I did take care of them. Yes, <laughs> I, I greased their pockets. I'm not too proud to say that that I. Talked to all of them individually and said, "Look, if a game gets good, call my room, put me on the list, and I'll I'll, I'll make it down." I love the smile on your face just then. I just got a, a few more questions, and I know that you're going to be taking the kids out to the movies, and we really appreciate the time today on Valentine's Day, as, as especially. Um, how about the the uh, Hold'em Manager, the Poker Track, all these different. Um, systems uh, online. Uh, what do you recommend to the the students out there, and and do you use them, and how much reliance do you have on them? I use Hold'em Indicator. Um, I have Hold'em Manager. I've paid for it. I I don't. I have a Mac, so it's tough for me to to actually use it uh, as far as downloading hands, importing them in the into the database, but. Um, I would say the HUD Hold'em indicator on Bovada is worth a hundred dollars, easy. Mm -hmm. um, for somebody that plays mid stakes, it's worth much, much, much more. Uh, um, I, I wouldn't say that it's, you know, it's weird. Uh, it's more of a guide than anything. A lot of people use it as like the holy grail of information and decision making, and to me, it's always been more of a guide. This uh, this one of our uh, viewers here today. His name is Jacripney. He has a team of IT specialists. He's out in, in Los Angeles, and he's uh, redeveloping that uh, that HUD system and the converter. And he's going to have a he's got a, a prototype out right now. And I don't know if it's going to be released in the next month or so. But uh, if it is, let me uh, later on. I'll put you in touch with him, and maybe he, he can give you a, a demo copy of it. You can try out and see how it does. Yeah, sure. Why not? Okay. Okay, you heard that, Jerry. Uh, Brad will take a look at it when you're ready to do it. Just get in touch with me, and I'll put you in touch with Brad. His his name is Jerry. He's out in uh, in California, and uh, he's been developing it over at, at Full Flush right now for Harpy Poker and several other uh, other sites. So it'll be yeah. interesting to see how that works out. Um, last question, last question I have for uh, for you, Brad, is um, is there an, a person out there that you look at as your idol or somebody that you want to emulate in this uh, world of poker? In poker? In poker. And, or in, in life. It can be somebody in life that, that is inspirational to you. That's fine, too. In life. Um, well, I, I guess... I mean, that's a, that's a loaded question. Um, in poker, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I I don't uh, I don't know I don't I don't know the guys that are su uber successful well enough to know if I if I idolize them or not. Okay. Uh, I think there's a lot that goes into that. I I would say guys that I look up to uh, 
I, I don't know. It may be somebody like Tim Ferriss, who's always searching for uh, the most efficient way to do stuff and, and high impact ways that affect your everyday life. Um, I, I think that, you know, somebody like uh, Sir Ken Robinson on TED Talks is an inspirational guy who's looking to, to change the education system. He, he sees it as kind of fundamentally broken. Right. Guys like that that dedicate themselves to uh, to a worthy cause. From what you've read, or if you have read it, would you have liked the opportunity to sit down across the table and just talk to a, a person like Stu Unger, who's considered to have such a a mind that was just unreal? Yeah, I mean, I've heard Stu Unger was kind of mean though at the poker table. Really? So, no, no. <laughs> I've heard he I've heard he threw cards at dealers' faces and spit on dealers and was just a pretty unpleasant guy to be around at the poker table. Very nice off the poker table, but on the poker table, probably not so much. Um, you know, I, I, again, uh, that's a very that's a very tough question. I would say Doyle. Doyle, yeah. I, I used to work with Doyle when we had Victory Poker on his, his site, and he used to come to our events, Victory Poker, up in, at... Uh, the Orleans and some of the other casinos up there. He's he's quite the gentleman, quite the uh, ambassador for the game. Uh, I hope that as you proceed through your poker career, that people look at you in the same light, and that you help so many people along the way, and you you reached your hand out to to bring them along rather than to push them aside. I think that from what our listeners got today is that you're one of the good guys in the in this sport, in this competition that we call poker. I thank you for your time. Next week, we'll have Tom McAvoy, the 1983 winner of the World Series of Poker main event, followed by uh, Chris Fox Wallace. We have Scott Long from Annie Up Magazine. Nancy Todd will be coming in. Vanessa Russo will be coming in. Ed Miller, Jonathan Miller, Jonathan uh, Little, and uh, Steve Dannemann after the tax season is over. Steve's uh, busy in Baltimore doing his taxes. But today, our special guest, we've been very fortunate to have Brad Wilson from Enhance Your Edge. Reach out, give him a sign up for your, your email, get into that think tank that he has going over there, prosper, do well, everybody, and have a positive attitude, positive poker insider. Signing out, and thank you once again, Brad, for a, a great interview. Thanks for having me, sir. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next Sunday when Tom McAvoy will be here. <laughs>